By surprise, Sony just announced its newest gaming lineup, Enzo. I've had the M9 monitor and the two headsets for about a month now. Now I've used them playing PS5 and also PC. Now I'm not a hardcore gamer, so I won't go into crazy details, but I'll give you my experience after one month. The Sony M9 is a 27 inch 4K HDR IPS display. It has great viewing angles with consistent color and contrast throughout the whole panel, regardless of your viewing angle. It has a high pixel density at 163 PPI, meaning text and other fine details will look good on this display. The Enzone M9 is a pretty bright display so you shouldn't have a problem if you're gaming in a dark area or even a well-lit area. So essentially what that means is that it's a bright display and it gets even brighter with HDR so HDR does pop out when you're playing a game with HDR or you're watching like an HDR video. It does have a unique design and that is the tripod style of stand. I don't mind it but I do understand the pushback on it because it's not regular looking. I do find it has some functionality but I don't think it's more functional compared to a traditional monitor stand. I will say one cool design element is that it has built-in RGB on the back. It's not super bright and it's not responsive. So if you're gaming, it doesn't show the colors as you game, but it is a cool element if your monitor is against the wall in a dark room and you want a little bit more light. Now, when gaming over the past few months, I played a few different games. The Last of Us 2 is a game that took advantage of the 96 zones of full of ray local dimming. That means it can dim parts of the screen, allowing black pixels to look black. So most displays only have a handful of zones, like 32 or so. So that means if anything happens in that zone, the whole thing will light up and it leads to inconsistent pictures and also gray instead of black. Thankfully, this is full array, so that is not a problem at all. Now, in the settings, you can adjust things like response time, and I think the standard response time works fine if you're gaming on a console. So, for example, playing Rocket League on console, that mode works just fine. Now, if you're on PC, a lot of those games can take advantage of up to 144 hertz, and if you go into faster, that is better for that setup. Now, this monitor does support VRR for AMD FreeSync Premium in NVIDIA G-Sync, which is compatible to go 48 to 144 hertz with dynamic range for tear-free gaming. Now, as far as connections, it allows for a DisplayPort 1.4, which supports 144 gigahertz with 10-bit 4.4.4, and HDMI 2.1, which is 4K 120 hertz, 10-bit 4.4.4, and you have two of those HDMI inputs. Now, in my testing, I found that gaming performance is exceptional without tearing or any ghosts or artifacts. The colors also look great in gaming and also just in general. It's a solid panel and I found the colors not only to just look great, but when picking the standard color profile, I found that the accuracy is close to my professionally calibrated monitor, which is impressive to be out of the box. Now, if your setup has dual computers, then maybe this next feature may excite you a bit as it did for me. And that is a built-in KVM switch. This will let you connect two computers and share one set of keyboard and mouse. I didn't get a chance to fully test it with all my peripherals, but in the prelim testing, just a standard keyboard and mouse, it did work as expected. Now look, this is the best 4K HDR monitor that I've used for under $1,000. Now looking at the market right now, this may hold up for the rest of the year in this category, unless something magically comes out around holiday season. Now, Sony also did release two headphones as well, the H9 and the H3. The H9 is the more premium of the two, featuring some of the same elements as seen on the XM5s from Sony. Whereas the H3 shares a few design clues, but does not have that same premium feature set like active noise cancellation. The H9 isn't cheap. It comes in at a pretty penny, for $300. Now it does have a premium build with soft fit leather. You do get 32 hours of battery life for gaming, Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi for connection. It does work with PS5 and also PC. The PC comes with a companion app, which is called Inzone Hub, which gives you a decent amount of features. There are plenty of bits and bobs in the software like EQ adjustments and the option to tweak the spatial sound. This is the audio quality on the microphone on the Sony H9. This is how it sounds directly from the microphone with no enhancements or no changes at all. Anyways, let me know what you think. Does this sound good to you? Does this sound bad? Is this what you expected? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, I personally think this is a good looking headset. It shares some of the same aesthetics of the PS5 and it has soft fit leather, which really feels great on my head. It does get hot since it doesn't have any holes to make it more breathable. And I found myself you know, sweating after just an hour of gaming. Now at this price, I would expect them to be more breathable and these are not. Now the bottom of the headphones, you do have a few buttons like NC and A and B. You also have game and chat toggle, USB-C port, and a volume rocker. Now the build quality doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel like 
$300. I can't put my finger on why. I guess maybe the use of plastic and just this headband and sort of shaking. I don't know. Now I do love the sound quality on these headphones. I did find for FPS, I was able to track down the enemies pretty well. And overall they sounded balanced. Now if you do want a more boomy experience, that's where the Endzone app lets you make that change. With spatial audio turned on, I found myself hearing locations of the enemies and gunshots that much better. I did find myself playing the game better overall with these headphones compared to other headsets I've used. So the next time I fire FPS, I'm definitely gonna be using these. There is a definite competitive advantage with spatial audio for gaming. Now the noise cancellation is a neat feature and it feels very similar to the XM5s. So that's an added bonus because these sound really good just for listening to music too. And also the ability to connect your phone and the game at the same time is really cool. So when playing with PC players or a different console and you wanna chat with them, you can connect on your phone to Discord, but also connect to the game too. So you have two connections at one time. Also, you can listen to music on your phone while gaming and things like that. So there's a lot of options being able to connect to two things at once. Oh, and I almost forgot you can take phone calls too while gaming. So you do have a lot of flexibility with these headsets, which makes it really nice. So you're expected to get 32 hours of battery life and I can say it seems about right. I didn't play 32 hours of games and I still have a good amount of battery life left. There's not percentage or anything that you can see, so you'd never know exactly where you're at as far as battery life, which is kind of a bummer to me. The H9s are an excellent first attempt. Audio quality is great, and for gaming, I did find myself hearing so much better than I did with other headsets. I do wish they were more breathable and better build quality, and the mic needs a little bit of work at this price. Okay, so here are the H3s. This is the headset I spent the least amount of time on. It's a wired gaming headset with the same design language as the H9 and XM5s. For $100, I think this headset does the job well. And I think expectations for a headset that's $100 is going to be pretty low. Now it's a step down from the H9 on many things, which makes sense, but to me there actually is an upgrade too. I think they're more breathable. I think it's the nylon pads that makes it more breathable. And also when they go over your ear, they don't seal like the H9s, but that also lends itself to being more breathable. I can wear these much longer than I can on the H9s. But are they better headsets? No, of course not. I do find the audio separation to be pretty solid, especially when you're playing a more casual game. The audio can sometimes get muddy in a first person shooter when there's a lot going on, but I felt they worked good enough in those situations. Now there's no way to adjust EQs using this headset, so you're stuck with how it sounds. I do think for $100, there are a few better options out there like Turtle Beach and SteelSeries. They have some entry level headsets that I find to be just a little bit better than these. But overall, I think they're still pretty solid. And there it is, Sony's Endzone Gaming lined up. What do you think? Is there anything you are looking to pick up? Is there a question that you have about these products? I had very limited time using these products, but I wanted to talk to you guys about it after using it for about a month. Anyways, guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja, have yourself a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.